Welcome to an introduction of Robot C and some basic programming. The first thing I want to show you how to do is change some of the defaults that come with Robot C. I'm going to come up to the Robot drop down menu and down to Platform Type. When Robot C is typically installed, it installs with VEX IQ as the default. So I want to change that to VEX 2.0 Cortex. If it doesn't label here or show here, I can come to VEX Robotics and I can choose it from here. I'm going to go back to that exact same menu, Robot, Platform Type, and this time I want to make sure that I put a check mark next to Natural Language PLTW. I then want to go to Robot, VEX Cortex Communication Mode, and change it from VEXNet or USB to USB only. I'd also like to go to the Window drop-down and select Menu Level and change that to Expert. Now that we've taken care of our settings, let's go ahead and look at some basic programming. I'm going to come up to File, Open Sample Program, and I'm going to scroll down to PLTW. Inside PLTW I have two files. I have PLTW Template and PLTW Template Backup. The backup is what I'm going to use if I accidentally overwrite the template. So as I open up the template, I want to make sure that I don't accidentally overwrite that, so I'm going to go ahead and start off by giving it a new name. File, Save As, Test Program. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Project Lead the Way template itself. I want you to focus on all of the green text. Everything that's green doesn't actually control the program. It's just commenting. We use it to go ahead and break up our program by descriptions um, or label it so that other people can interpret your program. So I'm going to go ahead and jump straight up here to the top and you can see that they've got this entire section green. They did that by forward slash asterisk on line 2 and then asterisk forward slash. So everything that is between those two asterisks will automatically be commenting or green. So I can type anywhere I want in between there and it's things that don't actually control the program itself. So let's jump to the task description. What do we want there? The task description is going to be your program described the way you would say it or tell somebody else about your program. So I've got the motor will run for three seconds and then stop. That's how I would tell somebody that I want my program to actually run. So I now have the task of getting that down to code, but I've got one step in between there. I'm going to take that complex thought and break it up into simple behaviors. That's my pseudocode. It's not quite code and it's not quite a descriptor. It's somewhere kind of in between the two. So what I want to do is I want to break that complex thought or that task description up into many thoughts or simple behaviors. So think about the way you pause when you would actually say the sentence, like the motor will run for three seconds and then stop. That's three lines of code that I'm going to go ahead and break up into pseudocode. So the motor will run is one. I don't need the word the and will. Um, I don't even really need run. Um, it's simpler for me to just say something like start motor for three seconds. I don't need the word for. I'm just going to say wait three seconds. My last line of code is and then stop. I don't need the words and or the word then. I'm going to put in stop motor. So that's my pseudocode. I want a line of code, some kind of programming that will allow me to start up the motor. I then want it to wait or pause for three seconds and then stop my motor. So that's it. I've taken a complex thought and I've broken it up into extremely simple behaviors. I'm now going to copy all of my pseudocode and paste it down inside task main, somewhere between the first curly bracket and the second curly bracket. Now, you can see that all of the stuff that I just pasted is in color, because it doesn't have any of that forward slashing that goes with it. And I could manipulate what I just copied down there and turn that into code, but that's going to be my commenting. 
So what I want to do is throw forward slashes in front of each one. I don't want to block out that entire set of code like they did up here because each one of these is going to have some code in between it or in front of each one of those forward slashes. Okay, so let's look at my first line of code. That's not really complete. Start motor. I took something off that was kind of important. The word the. Um, I had start the motor um, or the motor will run and I don't have that anymore. So start motor doesn't tell me which one is supposed to run. Well, neither did the word the. But I actually have multiple ports that I could be plugging my output into. Um, so I'm going to need to have a descriptor that says something like port 1, port 2, port 3, and so on. So now that has replaced the word the. But there's some other things that I didn't really describe like how fast do you want the motor to go or what power do you want to run the motor at so I'll go ahead and say full power I also didn't say whether I want it to go forwards or backwards and that's really kind of tricky whether you want to call it clockwise or counterclockwise positive negative forward backwards because it really depends on how you're looking at the motor so for right now I'm just gonna put something like clockwise so start motor port 1 full power clockwise if you want to put commas um, or some other things in there to try to help you break it up, that's all fine. Wait for three seconds. Seconds is the descriptor. And then stop motor. Stop the motor, which was going to be on port 1. So stop motor port 1. So everything down here, it's not complete sentences. It's not complete thoughts. It's simple behaviors. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to put the code in front of there. And rather than try to remember them all and all the little things that have to go with it, I'm going to borrow them from natural language. Once you get good enough, you kind of just know them by yourself. And as you start typing them, um, it'll start pulling lines of code that you could type in. So I'm going to go ahead and go to natural language. And I've got a whole bunch of different things that I could use um, or I could borrow code from. I'm going to get it from movement. So if I open up movement, I can see the two that I want. There's my start motor and my stop motor. So I'm going to grab it, drag it over to line 21, and let it go. And unfortunately, as soon as I do, it's going to kick everything I have on that line down to the next one. Uh, that's okay. I can just come in here and hit backspace, and it'll kick it back up. Since I have that menu open, I'll just go ahead and grab the stop motor. Same thing, it's going to kick my text down, and I'll bring it back. All right, last thing I have is the wait for three seconds. So I'm going to come down here, and I have an until, which we'll get to maybe later. Um, but I want to open up this wait, and I have a wait here. Let's wait for time. I'll bring that one over. And same thing, backspace. Okay, if you want to go ahead and get rid of your extra spacing, that's all fine. Um, it doesn't really it doesn't doesn't matter if there's extra spaces in there or not. That doesn't hurt the program um, at all. But what I do like to do is come up here to this fix formatting. Every time that I've got my code done um, or I'm ready to kind of move on, I'll hit this fix formatting. It'll take care of some tabbing for me. It'll be a lot more important later. Okay, my code's not quite done yet. So as I put the descriptors into my commenting, I need to carry that into the code. So start motor, port one, speed, I can go anywhere from zero to 127. I can't really use zero. Zero doesn't actually actually give the motor enough power to be able to run. So usually I'm actually somewhere between 20 something and 127 um, it really has to do with the power of the battery how much uh, how fully charged the battery is but it said full power anyway so 127 it's that clockwise part um, forward positive negative backwards whatever it is that you want I can have a positive number or I can have a negative number either one of those is going to change its direction wait for three seconds well I need to put a unit with that how does it know that it's three seconds well, if I come over to my wait and I just kind of hover over it, it says, wait an amount of time measured in seconds. So I don't have to put anything with it. As soon as I bring that line of code over, it knows that everything I type in that window is going to be in seconds. And yes, you can put in decimals. I know it stays black, um, but it will run. So three seconds. And then port one. So I think I'm done. I want Robot C to go ahead and interpret my code and make sure I don't have anything in there um, that it doesn't really like. So I'm going to come up here to Compile Program, and it has done it. If there was any kind of error inside the program, 
So say this semicolon was missing and I compiled the program, then it would tell me that there's an error and it tells me that that semicolon's missing. But if you grab it from the natural language, the majority of the time you're not going to have those kind of errors anyways. So compile program, no errors. That's really all there is to being able to develop a program in Robot C. Go ahead and write out your description just the way you would tell it to somebody else. Break that up into extremely simple behaviors or extremple thoughts. Then go ahead and carry that down to your task main and start bringing over the code that will allow your comments to happen.